So this is a very exciting time in eosinophilic diseases, I think um, primarily because of the rapidly increasing number of targeted therapies, um, both targeted therapies that that target eosinophils themselves directly and indirectly, but also therapies, as many of the people at, at the MPN Congress know, that target specific mutations um, in myeloid eosinophilic disorders. That, that in itself means that there's a huge need for being able to identify which people respond to which which drug. Um, a perfect example of that is two drugs, um, one against anti-IL-5 and the second, which is a drug that targets IL-5 receptor. Um, the first, uh, the first anti-IL-5 drug, mepolizumab and reslizumab, both target anti and both target IL-5, um, those drugs essentially deprive eosinophils of the growth factor that they need to survive. Anti-IL-5 receptor or benralizumab targets the receptor for killing by the host zone in K cells. Um, these two drugs function very differently. They seem to work in many of the same patients, but with some differences and understanding which drug is better for which patient is, is really a big challenge right now. I guess the, the second challenge related to that is understanding what drives eosinophilia. Um, hyper eosinophilic syndromes, as we define them, are um, diseases where eosinophils drive the disease that we see. It's hard sometimes to know that that's the case. We often can't biopsy the tissue or directly prove that that's the case. And these drugs are allowing us to understand the role of eosinophils in these disorders. Um, a, about 10 to 20% of what we see, if you look at all comers with, with eosinophilia greater than 1,500 are patients with myeloid disorders. There have been a huge increase in the number of mutations that are associated with these myeloid disorders. The WHO really only recognizes a few um, of the mutations. Um, at the meeting, I presented some data on novel mutations that are now known to be associated with this disease that don't respond to the classic drugs that we've been using, including imatinib, identifying those patients and finding targeted therapies for them is going to turn out to be a really important area. Um, the, the diseases that I presented were STAT5B, which is now known to be a recurrent mutation driving eosinophilic myeloid neoplasms, um, as well as a, a UBA um, abnormality, which causes a syndrome called Vexus, um, but I could have chosen five or 10 others that are now coming to light. In my talk at the meeting, I summarized a little bit of data on some of the newer agents that are, that are, um, that are now available. Um, I think the, the flip side to, to what I've said already would to do with response and figuring out which patients res might respond to one drug or another is equally important when you start to think about safety. Um, I think we don't know a lot about depletion of eosinophils. Um, we know we have data from about 2000 to the present on the anti-IL-5 therapies, but they don't completely deplete eosinophils. Um, data on benralizumab and some of the others which appear to deplete more completely is really um, not there yet. To date, there seem to be no safety signals, um, um, but I think as we start to combine biologics and combine targeted therapies, we may start to see that interfering with multiple pathways leads to more problems than we're seeing with these initial drugs. There are also some agents like dupilumab, which has now been approved for several eosinophil-related diseases, including eosinophilic esophagitis um, and eosinophilic asthma, um, those drugs block eosinophils from going into the tissues and make people better, um, but they may increase eosinophils in the blood. And the consequences of that in patients who have a very strong driving force towards eosinophilia is really unclear, as most of those patients have been excluded from current trials. So I think this is, like I said, a very exciting time. There's a lot of, of drugs available. There's a lot of novel techniques, sequence to be able to identify some of these newer mutations. And the real unmet need is trying to figure out how to match the, the etiology of the disease with the most appropriate treatment.